This is Jack Ellis, owner of Force-Fed Effects, a leading New York-based digital effects house. After the success of his work on such films as The New Towering Inferno, Big Bug Attack, and Too Young to Die, Jack Ellis is turning his company's attention to a new challenge. We call it the free process, F-R-E. Uh, which stands for Film Restoration and Enhancement. My partner, Stephen Daniels, and I, we had this goal that we wanted to take American classics and give them a rebirth to, uh, to free them from the limitations of old technology. We're taking good films, and through digital techniques, we're making them great. The first movie that we freed or augmented uh, was Harvey, which is an old black and white Jimmy Stewart movie. We'd never seen it before, but we liked Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Yeah, yeah, even though I'm not a big fan of black and white. But an older friend of ours uh, turned us on to it, so we figured, what the heck, let's, uh, let's check it out. Yeah, and uh, it turns out that the movie was perfect for the free process. A 1950 Jimmy Stewart comedy, Harvey, is the story of a man who befriends a six-foot rabbit by the same name. And now, Aunt Ethel, I'd like you to meet Harvey. Harvey, you've heard me The biggest about problem with Harvey is that you never get to see the rabbit. Exactly. I mean, it's six feet tall, right? People, people talk to it. They, re they respond to it. Uh, they, they, they look at it. But, but where's the rabbit? The director, um, what was his name? No. I don't remember. Um, he, he apparently wanted to have a rabbit in the movie uh, but the best he could do was have some big guy in a costume. The premise here uh, was that people watching the film should use their imagination instead of actually having a rabbit on the screen. Yeah. No? Oh, no. deluxe edition? We realized that our mission for this movie was to put the Harvey back into Harvey. Exactly. Ellis and Daniels had a difficult road ahead to create a believable digital Harvey and insert him into every relevant scene in the movie. So we got this guy. Right. I figured some kind of suit like that. Okay. And here's like, this is like more just a rendering of what he would look like up, up close. Is there something in the eyes, almost a sadness? Here's like, he's fearful. I mean, we should probably get like a real artist to do this eventually, but. You think? Pick which one of these? There's a whole, there's an energy. There's a, there's a real energy right here. I want to try to capture that. Okay. Well, that's, that's what you have to do. I mean, we only have about six weeks to do this. So you, eight? I forget. Action. Well, Harvey, what do you say we go down to Charlie's and get some drinks? Oh, Elwood, stop this nonsense. You're ruining our lives with this Harvey character. Oh, 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 to further the illusion of a realistic Harvey, Ellis and Daniels hired actors to recreate scenes from the movie. My name is Chad Stelfreeze, and I'm a motion artist. I've done a lot of Jimmy Stewart stuff. <laughs> yes, I have. Um, I got the one-man show, Zuzu's Petals. When they pitched the project to me at the uh, audition, <laughs> uh, I was just overwhelmed. Rabbits and me are sort of uh, destined to be together. I was in, of course, I was in Watership. Uh, I was also at Disney. I played Burr Rabbit for a while. We are taking something that's very old and we're making it into modern magic to the advantage of modern audiences. They can see what a real rabbit would be like. Once Stephen Daniels had finalized a paper design for Harvey, he had to forge the digital equivalent. I uh, utilized this technology called inverse kinematics, which actually allowed me to create these digital bones uh, directly inside of Harvey, allowing him to move with um, unprecedented uh, fluidity of motion. We learned something from, from the mock-ups that we did, um, which is that we don't know the way that Harvey should speak. Right, I mean, he's obviously talking all the time, he's saying something, but we don't know what he's saying. Is he, I mean, is he speaking in English? Right, uh, ultimately, I, I think we've, we've decided that since Elwood spent so much time translating for Harvey that Harvey must speak some sort of foreign language. Right. Uh, other than English. Is this K silent? How, um, how do you pronounce um, this? Here? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. Try that Actor out. Frank Grimes was okay. chosen to bring Harvey's voice to life. All right. Um, well, I'll, I'll, just, um, I'll just begin and then we can see how, how, how that sounds to you. <clears throat> Sam Arf? Coselero reprapasete. No lotos, fo, de cre, yef, 
It's a motono maze. Yeah, um, if there could be something more um, with a little bit of a uh, of an angularity to Just it. Just having a little bit of trouble imagining what a uh, what a what a, a bunny would would sound like. The consonant, less consonant, would be good. Surely not, not like a, a Mickey Mouse or some. Senex no such et to not need mel nethna na kanad misne niotamana rem totok et gnishnef. From beginning to end, it took Daniel's team of over 200 animators more than 39 weeks to animate Harvey. They created a total of 27,000 separate animation frames. But at last, it was done. The finished scenes show the digital mastery of Ellis and Daniels, as in this one from the end of the film. You could be sitting on the western slope waterboard right now if you'd only go over and ask them. Love you. Oh, Elwood, don't be a fool. Oh, well, I won't. Why, you could amount to something. You could be sitting on the western slope waterboard right now if you'd only go over and ask them. I like to meet Ordway. And now, Aunt Ethel, I'd like you to meet Harvey. Harvey, you've heard me speak of Aunt Ethel Chauvenet. She's one of my oldest and dearest friends. She's the Ellen. one who... na cannot miss me. That's right. Well, this is the one. Rip talk. No, no, she's the one. Senex no such. It to not need me. He says he would have known you anywhere. Our goal was to take an average American classic and make it great. And it looks like, in the end, we accomplished that goal. I don't think either one of us is trying to say that what we've done is perfect by any means. I'm sure that in 10, 20, 50 years there'll be technology developed that will enable people to come close to what we've done. Jane Austen, sense and sensibility. The thing that everyone is asking us is what's next? Where are we going to go from here? Where are we going to put our efforts and what are we going to restore and enhance? Uh, on the list so far is uh, Lawrence of Arabia, uh, Battleship Potemkin, uh, Citizen Kane. Yeah, of course, then there's Alfred Hitchcock's Rope. Um, we might dabble with the rear window Man, and see what we can do there. And there you go. Yeah. Some people have asked us why if the movie is, uh, is black and white, uh, is Harvey's nose red? Well, it's pretty obvious. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's an homage to uh, one of the best directors of all times and his, uh, his, his best film. Steven Spielberg, Chandler's List. Because the girl, you know, with the, in the dress, the red dress. You remember, she, there was, um, in, the, in, in the film, there's a, a girl that walks with the walks by. red dress. And, the, and, the, and then Harvey has the, uh, has the red nose. So, it's red and red. Right. Because the rest of, the rest of Harvey's black and white, and, and Schindler's List is black and white. I, I, I can show you. We I, have it on tape. We have it on, yeah. <laughs> 